welcome today to Speak Love. We are so glad that you are with us. I am just so excited to just be with you today. Usually we have a full room of women, but today I just get to be with you and it's so lovely. And I want to thank you all for watching, um, just commenting. You give me hearts, likes, shares, subscribes, all that good stuff. Thank you so, so much. Years ago, I was in the hospital dying and I was all alone. I was in a foreign country, Canada, and they did not allow Christian television at the time. And so we had someone that shot shows over from Seattle over into the hospital. And the beautiful thing was, as I had a little television hooked onto the end of my bed, and there was someone there praying for me every day. I'd be crying. I'd be so sad in my wig in the closet. My surgery's all. But Jesus would show up. And I said, if I can ever be a blessing like that to someone on television, God, I will say yes. And through COVID, God opened the door. So here I am, and it is so lovely to be able to come into your house, come into your car, come onto your screen, however you're watching, and be with you today. So I want to talk to you today just a little bit to encourage your spirit, lift you up. I know someone was just telling me how our show was going through, because Pastor Stephen has a show an hour before I do, and then I come on an hour, a half hour after him. And it was just so amazing. People said that the, our shows were going going through the hospital room. So if you're in the hospital bed today, can I just encourage you and tell you that Jesus is right there with you. I pray right now for angels to surround your bedside and for you to just sense the presence of God in your life, wherever you're at today. I pray that you sense the presence of God. So I'm going to pray right now. Lord, in Jesus' name, thank you for this time together. Thank you for this beautiful person who's watching today. Yes, you are a beautiful person. Jesus could care less about your choices. Jesus could care less about your life. He cares more about your heart. He cares more about who you were created to be, and he loves you intently. So Jesus, use my words today as I get to spend some time with my beautiful friend. I have this handbag here. Pastor Stephen, he bought me this many years ago, and I pull it out every fall because it matches my shoes. And all the girls, when they were just in here, we all laughed together, and we opened up, what's in the fall bag? And I was telling them all about my favorite makeup that I'm using, because that number one question I get asked is, what kind of foundation? foundation do I use? And so I pulled out the foundation. I used the IT Cosmetics, the CC, the Corrective Cover Cream. Uh, we were talking about Olaplex, how you can make your hair stronger. And we were just talking about, oh, Mary Kay, their beautiful water here. This makes your skin so plump and beautiful. And um, my favorite mascara is the superhero black. And we were just pulling things out of this purse and talking about what's in the fall bag and having fun and laughing and asking questions and having a good time. And this purse is a beautiful purse by Patricia Nash. It's a beautiful designer purse. It's, it's got all of the beautiful fall types of printing in it. And it's made out of leather and it's gorgeous and it's beautiful. And it has the Patricia Nash stamp inside of it. But you know, even if I were to pull the stamp off and throw it in the garbage, it does not mean that this purse is not valuable. This purse is very valuable, not only because of what it's made of, but because of who made it. The designer made it. The designer hopefully put her heart into it, put her soul into it, thought about the design, thought about the hardware to it, thought about how much it would look beautiful. Because girls, we all know we do not carry a purse. We wear a purse. We all know this. We wear a purse. So, And I always say, how does the purse sound? I like a purse that sounds good. I don't know why, but I like it when it sounds good or it has a little jingle to it. Um, and so you just, you don't just carry a purse, you wear a purse. But you know what? Many times we're like this purse and we can feel devalued. We can feel like our tag has been ripped off, our identity has been ripped off, our challenges have been, have made us feel like we're not worthy, but you're worthy today and you're worth so much. And I would just speak to you today not to let your circumstance devalue you. We all live in this world and this world can be very, very tough, but you know what? You have value today in God. He values you. And you're, you, you might feel like this person today that you may just feel like, I have no meaning. I'm useless. No, you're not. You have meaning. A designer completely designed you. He designed you with purpose. He designed you with honor today. And he loves you. And he wants you to know that you are useful to him. This handbag is very useful to me. I can put all kinds of stuff in. I can carry it around. It's very useful. You're very useful. And the beautiful thing about value is this. Your worth and your value is also in the usefulness of the possessor, if your usefulness and your importance to the possessor, to the one who owns you. So you have immense value today to Jesus 
who's the one who created you. He's the one who loves you. He's the one who's over you. He's the one who calls you valuable. So people can try to devalue you. Situations can try to devalue you. But value comes from God, the designer, the creator of you. You're useful to him. He has a plan for you. He needs you. You have a world around you that you can affect and love and that no one else can do it exactly like you. And so that's on your life. Nobody can carry what you can carry. You were designed to carry things in life. You weren't designed to just be devalued, worthless. Absolutely not. You have worth and you have value today. And I love in Zechariah 2, 8, it says this, the people of God were going through a very, very difficult time. And Zechariah stood up and he said, everybody better watch out because people who have come after you, people who have hurt you need to know one thing. They have hurt the apple of God's eye. Do you know you're the apple of God's eye today? Like they better realize they'd be dealing with the apple of God's eye, like the cream of his crop, the people, they better watch out. And you know what? You're the apple of God's eye today. And people better watch out when they come against you because God is your protector. He's your provider. He's your lover. He's the one who created you today. And he calls you worthy, great worth. Zephaniah 317, another prophet in the Bible says it like this, the Lord your God is with you. In another version, it says, the Lord your God is living among you. The Lord God, mighty warrior who saves. The Lord your God today is your mighty warrior. When you have a warrior fighting for you, you no champion, our church is called champion church. It means one who stands and fights for another. So you have to realize Jesus is your warrior. He has stepped in. God is your mighty warrior. You do not have to fight the battle. Recently, we got involved in an online thing, and everybody's blah, 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 and people are typing things and saying mean things. Do you know what Pastor Stephen and I did? Oh, my gosh. We did nothing. Nothing. Why did we do nothing? Because we stood back because we know one thing. God is my mighty warrior. God is our warrior. We made a statement. That was that. Did we make it perfect? No. (laughs) Everybody, doesn't matter what you say, the lawyer said. We don't care what you say. You could say it's raining outside and everybody's going to come against you. It doesn't matter. So you know what? We just let God be our warrior. And today, God is your mighty warrior. He is mighty to save you out of destruction. He is mighty to save you today out of your disease. He is mighty to save you out of your loneliness, out of your despair. Your God is mighty today. And I speak strength into you right now in the name of Jesus that you have strength to endure the thing that is before you today. You have strength and endurance to raise that child, strength and endurance to face what you need to faith, strength and endurance to go through what our world is going through. Oh my goodness, there's so much fear, inflation, and wars, and rumors of wars. And oh my gosh, for the first time, we're being told a nuclear bomb could go off in a very, very long time. Now, I remember in high school, we had some situations going on with other countries, and we had yellow ribbons on everything. And our high schoolers, teachers sat us down one day and said, we need to talk about a nuclear bomb going off. We're like, what? I was in high school. It was, this would have been 1981. And he said, this is what you do in a nuclear war. You get in your closet. You get every single blanket and towel and piece of clothing you can. You wrap yourself up in it and you get in there and you wait because it's going to take time for the waves to go. So you figure out where it went off at. And if it's not super, super close, get in that closet. Make sure you don't cut off your oxygen so you pass out (laughs) and wait there until hours and hours later so all the clothes can absorb everything. I mean, talk about fear. But we're having PSAs going out now in America that there's a possibility of a nuclear war going off, a bomb happening, and the fear. But God is our mighty warrior. He's your mighty warrior. Why do we fear death so much? I always say there are so many people in heaven waiting for me. I cannot wait to get there. I'm going to live life as long as I can. I love life. People need me here. I'm going to be here as absolutely long as I can. But death is not my end game around here, everybody. I have eternal life through Jesus Christ, my Lord. I'm going to live like this could be my very last day. And if it is, it is. So in the meantime, I have a lot to do. In the meantime, your family has a lot to do. So mama, don't wake up in fear. You wake up. You make that a 
amazing breakfast. You gather all your babies around the table. You talk about good things. Every time you have a meal, ask everybody around the table, tell me two things. What was the hardest thing you did today? And what was the easiest thing you did? Or what was the happiest thing you did today? What was the saddest thing you faced today? Talk about two things. Get the kids laughing. Get them having fun. Your home is in a museum. It's not a shrine. It's a house. Let your kids have fun. Let your kids enjoy life because you don't know what tomorrow brings. So you live in the present moment. And every time your mind wants to kind of go, well, oh, God's in control. You have to remind yourself. You got to remind your mind, God is in control of my life today. So I speak to you now, peace over your family, peace over your mind, I know anxiety right now is completely out of control. People's loneliness and anxiety and what if and how come. And I want to just tell you right now, there's peace in Jesus. There's peace in knowing that he has got all of this in the palm of his hand. And beautiful one, you are not fighting anything alone. And if you are, you need to really consider giving Jesus a chance in your life. Because when Jesus comes in, anything could happen. And that's what a true champion is, is one who stands and fights for another. They stand. God is your warrior today. He is standing in and fighting for you today. He calls you worthy. He calls you valuable. Nothing is going to devalue you. You let things devalue you. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. And you know, if you have to talk about somebody else and you're going on and on about somebody else, they own you. You need to let it go and quit talking about it. You need to let it go and just let God be God and let God do his thing. He is an amazing father. He's your father. He's going to take care of his children. You are not to be in worry today. So we have God is God calls us worthy and God calls us us loved. You are loved today. We talk about love. This is called speak love because perfect love casts out all fear. When you're under the love of Jesus and you understand that beautiful one, you do not have to be in fear today. I love Romans 8, 35 and 39. I want to just take you there in Romans 8, 39. You know, you need to have a relationship with your Bible. I get online stuff. Online stuff is amazing. It's a lot of fun. But you know what? There's nothing like that relationship with your Bible where you just read it. You mark it up. Here's a message I spoke once and I did everything I wanted to say in yellow. And um, so I'm an Acts Roman. Here it is, Romans. And... Um, a relationship with your Bible. One way I've always said that helped me throughout my life as a young mom, uh, one way that for, for me to have my Bible to be read regularly is I put it in places. So if you're in the restroom a lot when you've got little babies and that's your only time, you can put it behind your toilet, <laughs> behind the throne, pull it out and just read it right there. One scripture can make such a big difference. I believe in planned Bible reading, absolutely. But sometimes you're in a stage where it's so much pressure and so many things are going on and you've got kids and husbands and jobs and all the things that happen that you need to make time and create time and craft time out to read the word of God and let it get inside of you. So Jesus calls you love today. And I love the scripture. Who will separate us? This is in Romans 8 and verse 35. Romans 8, 35. And it says this, who will separate us from the love of Jesus Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sorrow? sword. Wow. That's kind of like the world we're in right now. <laughs> Who can separate us? Can any of these things that bring fear separate us from God? Is because something bad that's going on, is that going to separate you from God? Is it going to pull you away from God? Absolutely not. If anything, let it propel you into the arms of God, not pull you away from the arms of God. You know, there were times in my life when I could have been so disappointed in God, and I was. I was disappointed in him. And there's no nothing wrong with feeling angry or hurt at life because it's going to happen. And you've got to mourn things through. I remember when I lost my little sister when I was 13. And it was absolutely devastating. After being an only child my whole life, I'm 13 years old. My mama gets pregnant. We have a beautiful baby room. Everything is happening. She goes into labor. I show up the next morning because I'm so excited. My little sister's going to be here. I didn't know if it was a boy or a girl yet. She was going to either be Deborah or Timothy. And I did not know what was 
going to happen. I was so excited. I walk in to find out my little sister had just went to heaven not too long before I got there. And everybody's crying and upset and hurt. And I was devastated. I could not believe that God would allow this to happen. My dad gave me five bucks. He said, go get as many dimes as you can and start calling people and telling people. I'm like, I, 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 I don't think I could do this. So I went to the little shop and I got a whole bunch of dimes and I just sat and I just put them in the old way. You had to make phone calls and the dime would drop down. I'd pick up that and I'd have to call all these people. And I had to say, the baby didn't make it. The baby, did. it was so sad. But in that sadness and in that anger at God, I took and I went into my room and I took my Bible. Now, I had been raised in church, loved Jesus, traveled around with my puppets, loved children's ministry, blessed kids all throughout my life. And I had absolutely no idea how the word of God could minister to you by simply just literally opening it like this. And I opened it to Psalms 40. And it said, I waited patiently for the Lord. He heard my cry. And there I was crying. I could barely even, my little tears were falling on my little pages of my Bible. And it says, I waited patiently for me. And he lifted me up out of the muck and out of the mire. And he set my feet upon a rock, making my footsteps firm. And it was the first time the word of God went from a page literally into my spirit because I was desperate for God. I'm so thankful that I didn't stay in my head only and walk around mad at God at what had happened. Come on, somebody, rock, walk around angry at him. How could you allow this to happen? And keep it all inside and make it about me, me, me. I'm kind of glad I didn't have to go and onto your social media and push the send button and have posts go. I'm kind of glad that all I had was to go home and pick up the word of God. And when I picked up the word of God and I opened it up to Psalms 40, I, I want to tell you something. It went into my spirit and it lifted me up. And today, I hope this message gets into your spirit and lifts you up. And you realize how much God loves you, not according to your circumstances. Life is just going to happen. Why do you think Jesus came here? He knew this was going to be it. He knew it was a rough place. They were praying, God, when are you going to send our salvation? When are you going to send our deliverer? When will he come? And Jesus came to the world. The Bible tells us in John 3, 16, God loved us so much that he sent his one and only son into the world. All we have to do is believe in him and he will give us eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So here it says, who will separate us from God's love? Trouble? Nope. Trouble makes you closer to Jesus if you let him. <laughs> or hardship, if you let the hardship make you closer to Jesus, or persecution, who's all been through some persecution lately? I think I have. We all went through a lot of persecution in this most recent time. But let me tell you something, most beautiful one, not the kind of persecution that's going on in other countries. If you live in America today, you are so blessed and you are so honored by God that I feel you have a responsibility to step up and take that beautiful honor of saying, I live an amazing place and I have a responsibility to be a blessing, to raise a good family, to love people, to give, to serve, to do what I can do and see what God will do. And so persecution or famine. Oh my gosh, everybody talks about food shortages. I don't know about you, but I've been to Walmart. There's a lot of food around there. And I pray for those who maybe are in food shortages right now. But if we were to have a famine, it doesn't mean God doesn't love you. That doesn't separate you from God's love or nakedness, or danger. We have a lot of danger going on right now. Or sword, absolutely not, for it is written. For your sake, we face death all day long. This is the people of God writing this saying, for your sake, Jesus, we are facing death on your behalf all day long. We may face these things, but it does not separate us. Even though it's tough times, even though it's hard, God, you are with us and it will not cause us to ever stop because for your sake all day long, we are facing death and we are are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. Now, I don't know about you, but I do not think I know of anybody living where I live that are sheep to the slaughter right now. But these people of God were willing to lay it all down on the line. They didn't say and go, God didn't allow this. And if God didn't allow that, and well, if he wouldn't have, and did they didn't do that. They were fully all in. Somebody was just saying to me, so beautiful on the phone yesterday, we were talking about some things they called to check on me and whatnot. And they just said, you are so strong. And I said, well, yeah, but not really. Because when I said yes to serving Jesus, when I said yes to being a pastor's wife, 
when I said yes to coming alongside my husband and doing what he wanted to do, when I said yes, that wasn't like, oh, it's such a good idea. Like, oh yeah, I'll do that until I find something. No, to me, when hands were laid on me, on my husband, Pastor Stephen and I, when we, hands were laid on us, that was a commitment in my heart. Jesus, I will serve you in the ministry all the days of my life. I already had as a puppeteer girl going around with my little ventriloquist doll, but this was very different. This was about stepping up and becoming someone strong to lead. That didn't come easy. You bet I'm strong. You bet because I do this on the behalf of Jesus Christ and his house. I do what I do because I love him. I do what I do because you're behind the camera and you need to hear the message of hope today. You need to hear the message of Jesus Christ today. So these people are laying their life down. It might have been hard. It might have been tough, but they were willing to do what their Savior asked them to do. These were tough times. It was dusty. It was rough. Women had to be dressed from the top of the their head to the soles of their feet with just their eyes showing. These were very devastating times. People were property switched around. It was crazy. But these people were willing to lay it all down for Jesus. And it says, will this separate us? No. In all these things, we are more than conquerors today. Today you are, I call you more than a conqueror. You can face all of the things ahead. You can face whatever's there. You can face the trouble, the hardship, the persecution, the famine, the nakedness, the danger, and the sword. You can face that because in all these things, we are more than conquerors today through Christ Jesus who loved us. He loved us. So if he loved us, I'm willing to go through anything for him. Are you willing to go through some things for him today? I wish I could say, you know what? When you find Jesus, you put the money in the slot machine, you pull it down and it's ding, 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 winner, winner, chicken dinner. It's not like that. When you serve Jesus, it's not a tough road. It's an adventure. Who wants it easy? Come on, somebody. Whoever said it was all supposed to be frosting only. You got to bake the cake too. You got to get the eggs. You got to get the flour. You got to get sugar. You got to get the baking. So you got to make it all just right. It isn't just about the fluff. It's about standing for your savior and realizing nothing can separate you from the love of God. I speak strength into you now in the mighty name of Jesus, that you are more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus who loves you. For I am convinced that neither death nor life neither angels or demons, nothing on the bad side and nothing on the good side, nothing, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate you from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Today, God calls you loved. Also, God calls you purpose today. Jeremiah 29, 11, there's purpose in your life. There's purpose in who you were created to be today. There's purpose in that design that God made you, that beautiful imprint that he put on you. And you know what's nice about leathery purses is that it, it, it wears well. It wears beautiful. I have a lot, mostly everything I have is faux leather, but this is a, this is a real leather from Patricia, Patricia Nash. She's an, a, an Arizona designer and does such beautiful work. But the more it's used, the more beautiful it is because it, it, it gets grooves and it, it gets softer. And that's like your life. The more God uses you, the more you might be tossed around a little bit, you get softer, you get pliable. God has purpose for you. He calls you purposed today. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to give you hope and a future. God has a hope and a future for you. There are plans over your life. God has a plan for you. Even when you go through your darkest hour, there's a plan for you. Even in my darkest hour, there was a plan for me. I had no idea that the little sister I lost, one day I sat up straight in bed and I said to myself, oh my gosh, my little sister had a message for me. I know that might sound weird to you, but she did. And the message was this, I'm a McCoy. My dad was born and raised in Tennessee and he's a real McCoy. They fought with the Hatfields. By the time he was a little boy, there wasn't as much feuding, but believe me, everybody talked about it. It was the bloodiest fight that has ever been on record that happened between two families, the McCoys and the Hatfields. And my daddy's a McCoy. And people would say the real McCoy. And he was raised as a McCoy. And so he was the only son in the family. So when he married my mother, they were supposed to have a son. 
But by the time I was 13, now my parents are going to have a baby. I was like, awesome, because so many people would say to me, oh, well, the McCoy line stops with you. Oh, since it's just Cindy, the McCoy line stops with you. And I carried this guilt around that I didn't even really realize that was there. And I would think to myself, how could I, how could I stay a McCoy? How could I make a McCoy happen? How could I be some kind of a way that I could make the McCoy line go on? And I thought about that as a child many, many times. Relatives would say that to me. My mom would say that to me. Everybody would say, well, the McCoy line stops with you. And I really carried that around. Well, something happened when my little sister was born, that guilt instantly dropped off of me. Because guess what? It wasn't me anymore that took the, the fall for the line. It was now on her. And what did she care? Because she went to heaven. It was like a gift that she literally brought to me and said, you're not to carry the guilt of not being a McCoy or being a McCoy and not being able to carry on the name. That's not for you to carry. I'm going to carry that for you. And you know, that's so beautiful of Jesus. So many times in our hardest times, we think it's all about just the devastation. But if you will step back and you will look in the devastation, God has a plan for you. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to pros prosper you, plans to give you hope, and plans to give you a future. In my mess, there was a message. And today, I pray that for you, that in your mess, you will see the message that you are valuable. Circumstances cannot devalue you. Mm -mm. You will not allow that anymore. God places value on you. You're worthy. You are valuable to your master today who made you, who created you, your creator who loves you today. And I pray right now as we get ready to close in the name of Jesus. Jesus says that you're also mine. So he said, you're worthy, you're loved, you're purposed. And today he says, you're mine. You're his. In 1 John 3, 1, it says, See what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world doesn't know us is simply because they don't know him. So today I pray that you will sense the lavished love of God on your life. You might be in a really dark time right now. Can I just say, stay patient. You'll see. In the end, you will see, you will see. Oh, even though it was tough, even though it was the worst of the worst, wow, God did something amazing. He blessed me in that. And that's what happened to me. And I believe that God's gonna do that for you today, that in the mess, you're gonna see the message that God will bring. Did God cause that to happen to my little sister? Absolutely not. My mother had had a, car, a terrible car accident. And when her water broke, there was evidence of that. And the doctors were very concerned at that moment. So it had nothing to do with God. It had to do with the circumstance that happened. And so when she came into the world, we had a beautiful celebration of her little life. It was precious. But the message came out of my mess. And I believe God right now that a message will come out of your mess because you are worthy to God. You are loved by God. You have purpose by God. And oh my goodness, he calls you his today. You are his. You are in the palm of his hand and he loves you so much. Thank you for this time together. I hope you've been blessed. I hope you've been encouraged. And I hope you feel and know that Jesus is with you always because we want God's very best for you. We love you. God bless you today.